In this video, we'll be treating a very important concept in physics known as the gravitational field. Okay. All right. So let's discuss the concept of a gravitational field. First things first, we'll take two basic definitions in the concept of gravitational field. Okay. All right. So our first definition would be to understand what gravitational field is. All right. So what is a gravitational field? By definition, a gravitational field is a region in space under the influence of gravitation. All right. So you can define a gravitational field as simply a region in space under the influence of gravitation or a region in space where gravitational influence is being experienced. Okay. We can also define gravitational field as a region in space where the mass of a body experiences a gravitational force or a gravitational pull. All right. So these are like two basic definitions for the concept of a gravitational field. All right. Let's look at the next definition. Now, our next definition will be on what is gravitation. Okay. Since we said, since we said um, a gravitational field is a region in space under the influence of gravitation, as we said here, as we said here. So what exactly does gravitation mean? When we say gravitation, what do we mean? Now, gravitation, by definition, gravitation is the force of attraction exerted by a body on other bodies in the universe. All right. So a force of attraction that is being exerted by a particular body on other bodies in the universe is called um, gravitation. So in, in essence, gravitation is literally a force. OK, so thus a gravitational force exists when a body and all other bodies Thus, gravitational force exists between a body and all other bodies around it. All right. So the idea is that bodies they tend a body tends to attract other bodies around it. All right. Or in its environment. Okay. And hence, a gravitational force will exist. Okay. All right. So having looked having looked at these two um, definitions, let's look at a very important law in the concept of gravitation. Now, this law is called Newton's law of universal gravitation. Okay. Now, let's look at an important concept in the concept of gravitational fields. Okay. Now, an important law in the concept of gravitational field is Newton's law of universal gravitation. OK, now Newton's law of universal gravitation states that the force of attraction between two masses is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. OK, the force of attraction between two masses is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. All right, so this is Newton's law of universal gravitation. Let's look at this law in mathematical form. All right, let's say we have two masses there. Um, let's call this mass one. All right, I'll call this mass one. Um, we'll create this. I'll call this M1. Call this mass one, M1. And let's say we have a second mass somewhere around here. Okay, we'll call this M2. Um, put the bigger circle there. Put the second mass here. I will call this M2. All right. Let's say I have two masses here. Um, when it comes to getting the center of a mass for shapes like this that are either circular or spherical, we usually take it from the center. All right. So something like this right here and somewhere here at the center. All right. So we have this. All right. So we have two masses there, M1 and M2. And M1 and M2 are being separated this and this are being separated by distance r like this all right from newton's law of universal gravitation we have that the force of attraction between these two masses f let's call it f we said the force is directly proportional to the product of the masses so that becomes m1 multiplied by m2 all right product of the masses and if i work on this we have that f is directly proportional to m1 m2 I'll call this my first equation. Now, this, this, the law also says that this same force is inversely proportional. For inverse proportionality becomes F um, directly proportional to 1 all over the square of their distance apart. Their distance apart is given by R. 
So the square of their distance apart becomes r squared. So I have this as r squared. We'll call this equation what two. Let's combine. Let's combine. So combining um, equation one and equation two, we have that f is directly proportional to the product of the masses, that's m1 times m2, and at the same time, inversely proportional to the square of the distance apart. And this now gives you something that looks like f is directly proportional to m1, m2, all over r squared. So we have this concept, okay? Now we know that in physics, in mathematics, if I have a proportionality sign as this, what you have to do is take it off and replace it by an equal to. So f will now be equal to. When you replace your proportionality sign by an equal to, you have to put a constant. In this case, the constant becomes g, all right? So in essence, I replace this with equal to g. That's all. Now bring all of these parts back, which is m1, m2, all over r squared. Let's bring it back. That becomes g, m1, m2, all over r squared all right so this now becomes the mathematical expression for newton's law of universal gravitation f is equal to g m1 m2 all over r squared what well, we said f is the force of attraction between the masses then you have the masses as m1 and m2 and r is simply the distance between the masses what about g g is a constant of proportionality known as the universal so G is called the universal gravitational constant. So universal gravitational constant. That's the name of G, all right? And it has a value, right? The value for G, it has a constant value. The value for G is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11, all right? So this is like the value of G. That's the universal gravitational constant. That's the value. Um, the SI units. For SI units, all I have to do is, if I have F being equal to G, M1, M2, all over R squared, I'll have to make G to be subject of the formula. And to do that, this is simply all over 1. So G, M1, M2 times 1 gives you G, M1, M2 is equal to F times R squared gives you f r squared to get g i'll divide i'll divide here by m1 m2 divide here by m1 m2 this cancels this so if i get the units from here we know that force f here is in newton so i have newton you have r distance in meters becomes meters but r is being squared that becomes meter squared all over you have m in kilogram and a second m in kilogram. So it's kilogram times kilogram, which will give you um, kilogram, that will give you kilogram squared. So my SI becomes Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. So you write it either like this, or you can write it as Newton m squared kg to power minus two. They mean the same thing. All right, so basically this becomes the um, SI units for the universal gravitational constant. Newton meter squared, per kilogram squared. All right, so we'll take that value and attach it to the constant. I'll we'll take that SI unit and attach it to the constant. So G is equal to this Newton meter squared all over kilogram squared. So basically, um, this is the mathematical expression of Newton's law of universal gravitation, okay? And we'll take a very simple example to explain this. Let's see example one or sample problem one. Um, example one, let's say we have two bodies, okay? Two bodies of mass, um, let the masses be 2.74 times 10 to the power 20 kilogram. And let's give the second mass as being, let's say, 4.31 times 10 to the power 15 kilogram. Let's have these two masses here. And let's take the distance between them, arrow, as being equal to, uh, let's take arrow as, let's take arrow as 1.5 times 10 to the power 3 kilometers to the power 
seven kilometers. All right, so you have this. If you ask to find the force of attraction between these masses, so how do you solve this question? All right, so I have these two things here, and I'm asked to find the force of attraction between them. So what exactly do I do? All right, let's solve this question here. As usual, my first task would be to write out the formula. The formula is F is equal to G M1 M2 all over R squared. Let's impute values. From here, the force of attraction between them will be F being equal to G. G is already a constant, and the value is 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11. That's the value of G into M1. We said M1 is actually 2.74 times 10 to the power 20 in kilogram, of course, mass in kilogram. M2, my second mass would be 4.31 times 10 to the power 15 in kilogram all over the distance between them. Now, let's look at this distance carefully. We know that distance is supposed to be in meters, but this distance here is given in kilo meters so we have to convert from kilometers to meters how do we do that this becomes 1.5 times 10 to the power 7 all right what we say a kilometer right kilometer is simply times 10 to the power 3 that means to eliminate this k here it becomes times 10 to the power 3 that's the value of a kilo now bring back the meters so we have this so this is the value of that kilometer in meters all right so it becomes 1.5 times 10 to the power 7 times times the 10 to power 3 is because of the kilo there. All right, so we'll take this value here, and this would give you, the value here becomes 1.5 times 10 to power 7 times 10 to power 3. Now, this is the value of arrow, and we said arrow squared, so we're going to square this value. This becomes this um, all squared. All right, so at this point here, get out your calculator, and let's see. F is equal to, let's punch numerator. So I'll get out my calculator and try to punch the numerator. All right, we'll punch numerator and see what we get. For numerator, you have 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11 multiplied by 2.74 times 10 to the power 20 times 4.31 times 10 to the power 15. If you multiply this, this would give you approximately 7.88 in two decimal places, 7.88 times 10 to the power 25. All right, so you have this all over. So this all over. For denominator, I would have my denominator as 1.5 times 10 to the power 7 times 10 to the power 3, this one here, close the bracket, all squared. If I square this, my answer here is 2.25 times 10 to the power 20. All right, so make sure you're punching correctly. You have these values. From here, F is equal to, all right, so if I do this division, 7.88 times 10 to the power 25, all divided by 2.25 times 10 to the power 20. All right. My answer here will be equal to 350222.22. Approximately, you have this in Newton. So this becomes the value of the force. Let's express this in terms of um, kilo. In terms of kilo, we'll move just three times. All right. That's one, two, three. And this is equal to three. Five zero. You put your decimal points here. So point two two. Since you move three times, you call it a kilo newton. All right. So hence, this is the value of the force. All right. So this is how we get this. Okay. All right. So we have this. All right. So we have this. Let's look at the next concept, which would be let's get the value of capital G. Now we said G here is called the universal gravitational constant. But before now, we are well aware of a small g here, this, which we call acceleration, acceleration due to gravity, due to gravity. 
And we know that for this, the value is about 9.8, um, 81 meter per second squared. Okay. So the question now, the question now is, is there a relationship between the capital G, which is um, the universal gravitational constant and a small g, which is acceleration to gravity? Is there a relationship between them? Yes, there is. Okay. All right. So let's get the relationship between them. We'll derive the relationship between them as an equation. All right, so let's look at the relationship between capital G, um, the universal gravitational constant, and small g, acceleration due to gravity. All right, to get um, the full access to this particular video, to get access to this video, simply join the JAM slash YEC membership group. All right, I'll leave a link to um, to join the JAM slash YEC membership group in the video description. All right, so check the video description you see a link to join my channel membership, all right? So click on the link, you'll see jam slash YEC um, classes, all right? So click on that and you get access to this video, all right? Our, we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step derivation of the relationship between this small g and capital G, and I'll use them to solve problems in physics, okay? So as I said, um, check the video description, you see a link to join my channel membership, all right? Jump slash YEC classes, or you can get it from my website, all right? So this is my website, www.jonahimanuel.com, all right? jonahimanuel.com forward slash courses, all right? And then look for the jam slash wire classes, all right? So you can get this video in any of them, all right? All right, then, if you enjoyed this video, as usual, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed this video. If it's your first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. And don't forget to also share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class. Okay, so if you need help with getting these courses, all right, if you need help, simply send me a direct message on WhatsApp, plus 234-90-3255-8166, all right? So send me a direct message on WhatsApp, and I could also help you get the courses, all right? All right, then, so if you enjoyed this video, as usual, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if it's your first time. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. And finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.